All right, Ada. Uh, I'm Dan. This is Gabe. Uh, I guess for starters, Gabe is uh, chairman of the Web Technologies Group, which is an agency of the Student Senate. Uh, I'm also part of Web Tech. We do a lot of things relating to technology and Senate. We manage the concerto screens on campus, and now we're writing this. Uh, I'm editor in chief of Polytechnic, so that's kind of how we got into this. So um, we're going to kind of try to keep this brief. Uh, most of it will be probably a demo. I'm just going to run over like why we're doing this, that sort of thing. Um, basically, the current Polytechnic website is WordPress based, it's old, it's clunky, uh, it's hard to upload articles to, it's hard to moderate, uh, it's hard to edit, and most of all, it's hard to improve. Uh, like I said, it's clunky, uh, it's blog style. Basically, every article is there in full. There's no snippets of articles, there's no nice looking, uh, uh, nice looking revolving highlight articles or anything like that. So uh, we are designing a brand new news management system uh, that is, like I said, specific to news. Uh, it's not expensive, obviously, because it's open source. Uh, there are no hard to build templates like WordPress. You know, you know, your average newspaper might have a few techies involved, but for the most part, they're not going to be very tech savvy, uh, and it's not going to be not going to be easy to build a brand new WordPress template that looks good and performs well. Uh, it doesn't require any knowledge of previous systems, so if somebody new comes into place, I don't know how to run this WordPress website, you don't need that. Uh, and it has an easy to use UI. Uh, as far as specifications go, uh, it's built with Ruby on Rails, uh, we're using a SQLite 3 database, it's fully HTML5 and CSS3 validated. Uh, we use nice CSS3 animations, as you can see, scroll up, go down. Uh, we'll get there in a second. Uh, and uh, basically, JavaScript calls some animations here and there. It's uh, pretty, pretty bare bones right now. Uh, I guess timeline-wise, we're looking to hopefully roll out a, a base site for the beginning of the school year for the quality. Uh, if that's not possible, we might um, side run them. So if you pop in, you can see the new website. If not, you're going to get the old one for the time being. Uh, as far as databasing is concerned, it's pretty complicated uh, as far as news articles go. You'd say, well, okay, so every news article gets an author, but that's not true, actually. A news article can have multiple authors. Uh, an author can have uh, multiple positions in the paper that change vary, uh, varying on the article. Um, you know, a person can be part of multiple organizations. And, you know, for instance, somebody part of the Senate might write for the Poly also in the Poly's time, but they're also writing for the Senate. They have to be attributed correctly. So uh, I'll pass it off to Gabe now. He's going to run through a little, uh, a little demo here. All right. So before we ventured off on this project, we did a little bit of research, mostly Dan, on existing news management systems, and there weren't really any at all. Um, the closest that we could come was with WordPress, but as he described, it didn't really meet his needs. So by creating this news management system, we can create organizations and attribute these articles to members of organizations based on their position. So, for example, I'm currently on here as a member of the Poly as the web manager, which you can edit your positions, create a new one. Here I have business manager, I added before the meeting, but let's say I'm editor, I can create that new position, I can either assign that one, but let's say I want to be business manager, I can create my new title, update it, and next time I upload an article, I'll be attributed as that position. Um, so going back, we split it up into organizations and uh, we have different positions for that and now we have a split for articles as well. Um, as you can see here, if you're an admin, you can go to the article index and search for different articles, change your sections. And sections are important because they will show up on the main navigation of the website which is also customizable. So if, let's say we have GM Week going on on campus and we have some specific articles for that. We can create a new title, add that, and it will be shown now at the top of our navigation. And you can match an article with a section. So let's say we go to news, all the articles that are underneath that section will show up there. Um, and the front page will pull the top five articles for each section and it will go through those as he was explaining earlier with the carousel-like feature. Um, as for the CSS3 animation that he was talking about, that the header on the page will minimize like that and you can scroll down. Um, other than that, 
I guess the next step that we're looking to take is making the site more customizable for other people that want to use it. As you can see right now, it's pretty much geared just for the Polytechnic newspaper, but we want to be able to change colors, uh, logos, things like that, change links to uh, social media websites. So by doing that, hopefully other people can adapt the platform as well and find a good use case for it. So, uh, to, to finish up with the site, uh, at least we got a working version. Obviously, padding here is non-existent, so you know stuff like that has to be added in. Uh, section head, section pages will have snippets of articles rather than full articles. They will also look better. Um, like I said before, there's a lot of work that's been done on databasing and backend design. Uh, Front-end design is not the hardest thing in the world, but uh, you know we're starting from scratch. I didn't want anything that looked like the previous site, and that's what stuck in my head. So I've been working my, you know, working my tail off trying to get it away from the previous site uh, and get it to look nice like that. Uh, are, are there any questions? I guess. We can be embedded to use some Usually, that is that one. Yeah. So, so actually, uh, this this was planned. This website. Uh, I started pushing for this at the beginning of last school year, so about a year ago at this point, maybe even before that. Um, I'm an IT major, so I know the value of a good website, and I know how much ours currently stinks. Um, we don't have any current way to embed video other than the HTML, but like I said, the WordPress site is fairly clunky, so if you put in something that it's not used to, it it doesn't, nothing flows correctly, it just it messes the whole thing up. We will definitely have uh, the ability to put in videos, we'll have the ability to highlight tweets, uh, to have a, a, a breaking banner, uh, breaking news type banner up top, uh, to be able to add and remove components and plugins of the site. So, you know, say Dr. Jackson is speaking at a, some sort of event on campus, we might have a box that has live tweets that come up as they come in. Uh, you know, much much more user friendly and a lot more information right there on the main site. I was just wondering uh, about the uh, how we're saying that uh, different people, uh, the same person might um, might write as different organizations and stuff. Yeah, uh, is there a possible? Uh, is there? Do you have plans to like um, allow these uh, people to feel? So actually, that's that's one of the big things that we were going to do. If I can get people in here for a second, hopefully the site is online. Um, if you come into here, if you click on my name, you have everything that I've ever done for RPI TV, and it's going to be similar to this. Obviously, it won't be by production or by issue because that gets really messy. But it will definitely have uh, the. It would probably be broken up into either months or something like that. But like I said, issues is a little too much because that's, you know, you have four every month, and if I write three things every paper every month there, boom, I have 12 in a month, and it just gets really cluttered. Uh, but it'll be something like this where it might be by my position. So as editor-in-chief, I've written these things, or I've, uh, I've responded to these uh, letters to the editor, that sort of thing. Does that answer your question? Uh, well, I was, so I was thinking, like, during the writing process, like, if you have a list of this, this, can you, like, pick and choose, like, uh, within the writing, within, within the writing form? You're saying that, uh, uh, I don't know how, uh, writing the articles on... I think, I think I know what you're getting at. You mean, like, when we put them on the site? Yeah. Okay, they're not written into the website. Uh, they can be, but that's not the right way to do it. So we use uh, Adobe InDesign to lay out our entire paper. And InDesign has this kind of useless feature called snippets. You select the, art the uh, elements of each article. So you select the headline, you select the body text, you select any images that are involved, any captions, that sort of thing. And then you drag them off the window into literally a folder, and it creates a snippet. It's basically a glorified XML file. Uh, each, each piece of text is wrapped in a uh, element, I guess you would say, that lists what the uh, paragraph style of that text was. And what a paragraph style is in InDesign is, uh, you know, if you look at my newspaper, all of the body text of the article looks exactly the same because we use the body text paragraph style. A parser will be written, it will look for those tags, and it will automatically parse this XML file to be uploadable to the website in one, in, you know, in one shot. Well, I was thinking more about the writers themselves. Like, 
if the writers were writing their article, is there, would there be some kind of like option to choose like, uh, from a list? That yeah, you can choose from a list of organizations you're part of, but by default, in the dashboard, you can set your own primary organization. So this is where we'll have most of our settings, um, including admin options for changing the styling on the site and things like that. And obviously basic options will be things that will be available to any user, regardless of privileges, things like your private organization. Have you guys looked into any like uh, fluid grid systems for the front end? It is. All right. Um, it was originally written without that using a proprietary, I guess, uh, fluid grid system that wasn't working out. Uh, it was also before we actually implemented Bootstrap. I've since, like the last week, what I've been doing is changing open all the old stuff. Uh, if you zoom in, it's also kind of weird because this this is a rotating, you know, carousel type article. So you have to have a div here, and then it screws up the spacing down at the bottom. Uh, another problem we just actually we came in an hour early to make sure it worked on this projector because it's fluid and things are hokey. Um, but where that block that uh, block quote was, you don't exactly know how long the text is in that block quote. So there's going to be some probably funny scripts to figure out exactly how much text we want. So you know the feature article ends here with a dot 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 rather than extending an X number of words. No, that's it. All right, thank you guys. So I'd like to um, Gabe and Dan for um, doing our um, videos for the YouTube. Um, first time.